Good evening ladies and gentlemen, how are we getting on? Welcome to Jamaica Plains. So, I'm going to repair the house today to begin with, and I've got a, a fair bit to try and squeeze in. There's quite a bit of detail on this one, so I uh, hope you forgive the reasonably quick pace. So this is going to be an extinction of my biker settlement, or biker build, for, which is hiding behind that big screen there. It's uh, where my biker bar is. For those of you who've seen the trailer, which should be popping up about now if you haven't, uh, I'm involved in a biker bar build challenge with eight other YouTubers. So, if you take a look at the trailer, you'll find links to their channels down below. We're all building here at Jamaica Plain, so that should be coming soon. So this is going to be an extension of that. I'm going to turn their lower level into a sort of workshop for repairing motorcycles and uh, a kind of player home on the top floor. So, this is kind of awkward to repair. doesn't like to play ball that much, but it's... Uh, the usual technique will be in bits, so we're going to group select in this corner first and then use that as a start point to snap to. So plan A here was to have a, a large door on the corner to uh, get in and out with, so, well to get bikes in and out with, but uh, unfortunately that's not worked out because of the angle and the actual size of the gap between the two pieces of broken wall. So. We're going to move around the inside, because I couldn't see what I was doing from the outside, and we'll uh, replace those door frames with normal walls. Right, group select with a concrete pillar. There we go. So I actually quite like the fact it's uh, sunk back a little bit there. It looks more like a repair job, which is kind of cool. If you have a look around the top here, you can see that kind of bar. It's where the upper floor used to be. It's kind of a useful guide for getting the right heights. These walls, by the way, are retextured uh, barn pieces, I think. Barn or warehouse, one or the other. Yeah, there we go, yeah, barn. Added by USO, so they match up quite well with the existing building, so that's why I'm using them. And they happen to be just about the right height, which is great. So, corner piece in, I'm going to snap the floors on. You can see in that left edge there, it doesn't quite fit at the moment, it's a little bit too far over to the right. So, grab our trusty pillar. Group select and slide it back across. There we go. Need to tweak it a little bit, get it lined up a little better as well. So I had hoped to conceal the um, walls I've added inside the existing ones, but the distances are a little bit too big for that, so... To make do with what we've got. Still not quite far enough there. Fortunately, when I grab it with the pillar there, you can see uh, the other floor pieces protest, so there we go. A little bit better. Close, but not quite. As we can see now we're up the top, it's also a little bit too high, and it's been awfully temperamental about where the floor pieces want to snap in, so we'll tweak it in just a moment. There we go. And uh, with snapping these floor pieces in, it's a case of seeing what works, really. So sort of head upstairs, head downstairs, try different angles, use different pieces in different places, and get as many pieces in as you can, and then we'll have to plug the gaps in a bit. So you see, that one doesn't want to snap there. It'll do that, okay, unsurprisingly, I suppose. That one's being awkward, but turn it around, there we go. At least that one was cooperative. So try and put a full-size one in. See, I've got it to the right height now as well. But that won't fit, so... And yet it'll snap there right through the whole thing for some reason. And this long one will snap through the floor there, just about. But the small one won't. So, yeah, it's... There's no real rhyme or reason to it. You've just got to make it work as best you can, really. So, snap those two in. Let's play ball there. But we have a slight problem with the using the longer pieces like that. Which we'll see in just a sec. Yeah, there we go. Sticking through the wall, that's no good. So, we'll pull that lot out. I've got some of it in place, and the rest we will group select in. So, these particular floors, by the way, are warehouse ones rather than the barn ones, because the barn ones look a lot um, more weathered, to be honest. I don't really like them as much. These are a bit neater and tidier. Anyway, we'll pop it up into the air. The thing to bear in mind is if the floor is not high enough, then the pillar will try and go on top of it rather than underneath. And the pillar's not quite tall enough there, so we'll grab a second one. Group select the lot. And position it in. 
So if you look right at the top edge of the screen here, you can see that the front edge of the piece we're moving in is sort of clipping through the existing pieces. And we're just trying to make sure that when those move through, they appear and disappear evenly all the way along this front edge so you know it's straight. And then just line it up very, very carefully, try and get it to the right height. Might take a little bit of trial and error, but I was quite happy I managed to pull this off first time, actually. There we go. Neat and tidy. So we'll take a quick look at that again. Grab it with a pillar, lift it up into the air. And it wants the group select anyway. There we go. Pillar underneath, second pillar, and repeat. Just watch out for those boards on the floor there, because um, they will actually prevent the pillar from sinking in. You can remove them with the uh, scrap that settlement, but then you have issues with the mod stopping your pillar sinking, so... I've actually got it switched off just at the moment. We'll have to come back and uh, switch it back on to finish off. But uh, that's on down the road a little bit. You can see we've got the gap there that unfortunately we can't fill up with a floor, but we will uh, hide it in just a moment. So, you can see we've got some walls on now. Just snap straight in, no problem at all. However, this section, obviously we've got nothing to snap to, and the angles are all wrong, so... Right angles only for the snapping, of course. But, using the ashtray there just to group select that in. Need a nice flat surface to grab it with. A little bit too far forward there. And, uh, yeah, if you start with the floor, the wall and the ashtray, rather, on a level surface, means it'll be, they'll both be flush with the floor when you group select them in. It's a technique I've used quite a bit in this one. There we go. And we'll do the same over here, just to plug that gap. I'm using a wooden piece here, just because it's uh, obviously an improvised repair job, so... It looks a little better that way, and um, obviously if the brick overlapped the wooden wall, it'd be a lot less, uh, a lot more visible, a lot less inconspicuous. So, yeah. snap the roof in. Nice and easy. Snap the ends in. And we're starting to get a structure together. So, this flat roof is going to go in the corner, and unfortunately, that won't snap either. But the wall's getting in the way there. So, once again, lift it up and use the pillar to group select it in. Again, a little bit trial and error, and it still doesn't quite fit, but as you'll see in a bit, we're going to come back and make some adjustments anyway, so... Double height pillar. This one, unfortunately, you won't be able to sink the pillar into the floor, because it's a Bethesda-built wooden floor up here. There you go. So it's a bit, as you can see, it's a little too high there, so... We'll come back down, lift this one up, and try again. Much better. So just line that up, close the gap on the left, and drop it into place. So as I say, we will have a few little gaps, but uh, we're going to come around and put some plywood on the top in a bit anyway, so we'll plug it up with those. There we go. Yeah, you can see a little gap there. But before we do that, just check I've got the right height there. We're going to shore up this angled section of wall. And unfortunately, the warehouse walls are not the right size, they're all too big and overlap the windows, which I wasn't very happy with. So, we're just going to board it up using different bits of plywood and stuff. These particular sort of door fillers, replacement doors or whatever they are, are actually added by a few mods, which I think I've got two or three with them in. But this one's actually from USO. For some strange reason, this is the only set of boards that's working. The window boards and the other bits and pieces are not group selecting. I, for some reason I just can't get them to group select. So. We'll make do with these for starters, and then we'll add some different pieces for a bit more texture. The goal here is to get it looking uh, sort of shored up, boarded up, rather than uh, permanent. Have it looking reasonably scrappy. So the rest of it's fairly neat, but I don't want it overly neat. I want it sort of uh, believable, at least as believable as possible. So these vertical plywood boards are from Toys Out of the Pram's uh, Pillars and Supports mod. There's all sorts of useful stuff in there. I've been using that a lot lately. As I'm sure you know if you watch my recent Ten Pines build. 
you can use a few different ones of those just close up the gaps there make sure it's up to the height of the roof here there you go and again it doesn't matter if it's not perfect the first time because we're going to need to put a roof on here and make sure everything lines up anyway so it's going to be a case of coming back to it in a minute just to make sure everything matches up the thing to try and make sure is that it's not sticking up too high really Otherwise, that's just going to be very obviously not right. There we go. One more snapped on there. There we go. So, up onto the roof. And again, obviously we haven't got any roofs that fit the bill here. And not that we'll look, well, any good when I put them in anyway. So, plywood boards again. It's a bit of a uh, crazy mosaic going on with this, but... Obviously they won't float in midair, so we'll stick them out as far as we can and then put the next one on the top. Angle that up so it's uh, following the edge there. Come on. Collision on that wall is quite aggressive. <laughs> anyway, so, got a few boards in. Now uh, we've got some that's starting to float and not wanting to position properly, so rug glitch them in. The last few, anyway. There we go, much better. With this one, it wants to float on the top of the others, so when you're underneath it you'll be able to see there's way too big a gap, so we've got a couple of rugs there angled just so that we can uh, have it slide underneath the board there rather than sort of floating off the top of it. There we go. So we'll pop back downstairs in just a moment and uh, take a look at that gap. So that's just a little bit on the large side. There we go. So we'll bring the middle section of the wall there up to the top. There we go. And we can just drop a last board on the top here to finish the job. There's a little bit of clipping going on there, but you can't really see it from below, so that's the main thing. And there we have it. Just drop through. Obviously we've got a bit of a gap there, but it is just boarded up, so it doesn't really matter too much. I do want it looking reasonably scrappy. On this side, unfortunately, I can't get these uh, wall ends, whatever you want to call them, these triangular pieces to snap in just because the uh, roof is too close to the existing building. So if you have a look at the floor there, I've swapped out one of the floor pieces for a barn foundation because that will allow me to sink the pillar in. So that way we can just snap the two together and then group set the whole thing into place. It's a little bit picky about where it'll go. See we've still got a gap there that we'll attend to now. There we go. That one went in nice and easy. This one won't, largely because that plywood board is there. So group select again with the ashtray make sure we've got a nice level surface for it and we'll drop that in to close the gap up. Later on I will come back with the uh, scrappy mod switched on, something I've done off camera, and just delete that board and use the same technique again to put one more wall in there. This one snapped in as well so that's all good. Okay, nearly there. <laughs> so obviously this bit of wall is kind of an awkward height and I couldn't really conveniently get a full wall in there without it being over the windows and it just didn't look right. So this is a retextured half wall from the wood tab. I'll group select that in so it's not too obvious. Could use boards, but I went with a brick here. As you can see there though, that window doesn't quite fit in the hole in the wall, the frame in the gap in the stone is not quite right so I'm going to double board that later just to hide that cause some slightly shoddy workmanship there <laughs> so as this is going to be a workshop for motorcycle repairs we're going to need a ramp rather than stairs to get in so these planks are from custom vanilla assets We've got different versions in uh, angled at uh, 10 degree increments so the 30 degree ones are the right ones there and use this board as a uh, rug for uh, rug glitching in this door and then it could also form part of the ramp as well since this particular door is one of the automatic closing ones and they do some of them snap but this one doesn't so there we go now move up and down there much more easily so, one last part for the structure anyway, before we get onto the decoration and have a look around. 
I wanted a separate entrance, so we're going to board up the other way in. So, drop a door on there. A little bit of warehouse floor for a balcony. Sort of landing. I'm going to use that piece of plywood to make it a little bit easier to see what we're doing while we group select it into place. Anyway, much easier to uh, line things up that way. And just carefully, carefully, carefully. There we go. And we use stairs from the warehouse tower. Because obviously those are the right height. And there we go. So, back to the Toys Out of the Prams mod again. For these little supports here. I've chosen these just because I wanted to do something a little different from my usual stuff. Didn't really want to use a, a scaffolding or build a sort of wooden box underneath it. So I thought we'd do something a little different for a change. So, unfortunately that just snaps into the ground so I'll have to group select it in. It's a little hard to see what you're doing sometimes, especially in the shadow here. But, a little bit of care, we'll get that snapped in. Line it up again, make sure it's not clipping through the wall too much. And there we go. Neat and tidy. So let's take a look, shall we? A few motorbikes out there. That frame there, by the way, the car frame is from Custom Vanilla Assets. It's um, the only one with wheels on, so I thought we'd put some boards down on top of that and they can use it as a kind of. Um, regular to hook up to a bike that they've already repaired so they can drag other ones back. We'll take a look inside. A little bit of a display and parking area. Here's our workshop. Not everything you need to repair things with, or repair the bikes with. Plenty of uh, storage for the tools there. There's a couple of little bits of uh, standard junk decoration in here, but most of it's come out of uh, Aslam's workshop decoration pack, and a couple of bits and pieces from makeshift furniture pack as well. As always, of course, my mods list is down in the description if you want to take a look. Biking is a work in progress there. Those boards, by the way, are from Toys Out of the Prams mod as well. They are very, very handy. I've got some repaired ones on display there, in case uh, anybody would like to purchase one. It's going to be a much more uh, rapid way of traversing the wasteland. And once again, yeah, behind that big screen there is where we've got our biker bar that will be coming out fairly soon. If you haven't already had a look at the uh, little trailer I did for that one, there should be a card for it, so just hit that little eye in the corner. You can go and check that out if you'd like to. And we'll swing around and take a look at the player home. I am really happy with how the decoration on this place turned out. Humble beginnings and all that, but uh, it's turned out really nicely. Let's take a look. Another automatically closing door, it's a warehouse one. Here we go. You can actually picture yourself living here. Nice little bit of a, a loft on the go. A little power armor station there. Boards on uh, cinder blocks there just to raise it up a little bit. Separate it out a bit. A little area to chill out. I just group selected the sleeping bag onto the top there, because although you don't actually need one, I figured it'd be uh, much more comfortable for sleeping on. I'm very happy with that little stove, by the way. Because you don't want to fire directly on a wooden floor, but raised up on a sheet of metal like that, I think that works quite well. Unfortunately, if you actually use it, you'll basically be floating in midair because you're supposed to be sat on the ground. But, it does look cool. I was pretty pleased with that idea. And I've divided this corner off a little bit, just to make a little workshop. Keep most of the fumes from all the metalworking and stuff out of the main living area. It's not exactly uh, airtight, but 
it will no doubt make a difference. Once again, I've got a little metal floor raised up on um, cinder blocks there, just so they don't uh, fire, but yeah, whatever that is, that burning barrel on the corner of the armor bench doesn't burn through the floor. Much more ramshackle, but as I say, the fumes can get out that way, so probably better for working in. There you go, all the essentials for a uh, sort of outpost for our character here. Comfortable. Most of this place won't have Minuteman flags on it, because it's um, not strictly speaking Minuteman allied, but as the character is, we'll have one up in the uh, living space here. And there we go. Head back down, take another quick look around the outside. Just thank you very much for watching, as always. I do hope you enjoyed. If you did, you know what to do by now. And if you'd like to support the channel a little more directly, then please do consider becoming a sponsor on YouTube Gaming. You can find links and information down in the description. For now, thank you very much, and I will be speaking to you all very, very soon.